I like a section like this. It's short and sweet. Um, here, I'm just only focusing on one concept, uh, the warrant scheme, and uh, it won't take long. And that's hey, that's what my church members uh, say. That's what they wish, you know, in terms of preaching. Because in the past, I've gotten gotten kind of long-winded. I'm a changed man now, but um, that they would like something like this. And even that previous section, short and sweet, right? <laughs> Applications of vector spaces here. I focus only on the warrant scheme, a pretty cool uh, test for linearly independent. Uh, you see this uh, here in this course and also in linear algebra. So um, uh, let's get right to it. The, the definition for the warrant scheme, uh, if you're given n functions, and these n functions are n minus 1 times differentiable, simply uh, said that um, you should be able to find n minus 1 derivatives uh, on the, uh, the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, then the determinant, so the Warren scheme is a determinant of these functions, where each column um, starts off with the function and then beneath it you start doing the derivatives and you do n minus 1. Uh, derivatives um, and so you you move on till you get to um, to that last column f of n we call this the Warren scheme of the given functions the theorem is what we need and that is that if the Warren scheme um, is not equal to zero then the set is said to be linearly independent otherwise the set is linearly dependent so the question or the test for linearly independence for functions uh, linearly dependence or uh, independence can uh, be derived by simply using the Warren scheme. Let's see. So here for um, for this uh, problem it says find the Warren scheme for the set of functions. So we compute this uh, Warren scheme of the two functions. Again remember that the Warren scheme is a determinant so we list the first function. If we have uh, two functions, that is n is equal to 2, then you're only just taking n minus 1 derivative, just one derivative. So we take this derivative, we get 2 times e to the 2x. And then this function here, and we take its derivative, negative 2 times e to the negative 2x. it seems like I'm writing sideways because I'm left-handed <laughs> okay so the Warren scheme and I'm just gonna label those uh, vectors or functions with that X hat so we compute this we get negative 2 times e to the that's e to the 2x and then you know you multiply same base you add the exponent so that's 2x minus 2x that's just e to the 0 and then this is minus 2 times e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so all we have is just negative 4. So uh, nothing there. Uh, likewise, let's take this one. We we'll find the Warren scheme of these three functions. And, and let me say this, the, the functions that and the problems that you have in the section are, are rigged in other words, um, I have uh, made sure that um, the problems are easy. You know, I, I just want you to get the concept, um, and and I think that's um, I think that's good. I think when it gets too complicated, just just use you know some some graphing uh, utility. Here you don't have to because uh, they're going to be very straightforward. And so I think that's cool. So we have x take its first derivative, we get 0. Remember here we have three functions, so we're going to be taking uh, two derivatives, then 0. The first derivative is 1, excuse me, the second derivative is 0. Sine x take its derivative, cosine. Be careful about those derivatives of cosine and sines, right? Remember where the negative goes. So I remember in calculus 1 when I was trying to get that stuff in my head, was that anytime I was taking the derivative of a trigonometric function that started with a C, 
that re the um, the result is always negative. <laughs> then negative sine and then negative cosine so 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 good deal um, so what I'm going to do is is basically uh, do uh, the uh, cofactor expansion yeah I'm going to do it along the stuff works when it wants to work. I'm going to do it here. Along the first column. So this worn scheme of the vectors. So I'm going to start with x. And so that becomes cosine x times uh, negative cosine x. So this is negative cosine squared x and that becomes minus uh, uh, that is uh, sine square x that's cool and then you remember the the, the sine uh, variance for the determinant plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus so I'm going down I'm using this column so uh, and I do that because I have a zero there and you, I could have used that that last row um, but uh, I saw the X the one and the zero and, and they seem to be uh, more appealing uh, to me so this becomes negative one and then we delete its row and column and so this is sine x minus cosine, so minus sine x cosine x, and then this is minus a minus that becomes plus uh, sine x times cosine x. We don't need the last one because it's just zero, right? So it's just plus zero. So this worn scheme that we're looking for is really only just being computed by by this term because these are opposites. So this is zero. So here we have uh, the x. Let's pull pull that negative. So that's a negative x. So we get cosine squared times sine squared. Well, that's just one, right? And so we just get negative x. Um, now here uh, negative x is not equal to zero uh, so if you had to um, if the question was are these functions linearly independent um, we would say yes so and and the same thing for that the previous problem I think we got a, a number that wasn't zero so so this guy is not equal to zero so literally independence and then this last one here so uh, the sworn scheme of these vectors how about that so we have four vectors so we're going to be taking three derivatives so this is five take the derivative of five we get zeros below that x get one zero zero x squared 2x 2 and 0 x cubed 3x squared 6x and 6 so since this is a a triangular 
matrix. Let's see if that highlighter works now. Yeah. Doesn't want to work for me today. I'm not going to complain. So since this is a upper triangular matrix, you recall that the determinant is equal to the product of the entries along the main diagonal. So here we just get 5 times the 1 times the 2 times the 6. So that's 10 times 6, we get 60. And, and so you can also conclude that these functions are linearly independent. Well, I'm going to stop there. That's basically, you know, all I have for this section. Um, I think in some of the old, the older uh, lectures with the uh, old textbook, um, I probably went a little bit more, but I don't think so. Um, I try to keep this as, you know, it's just straightforward as possible. So I'm done. Hey, you all have a good one, and um, take care of yourselves.